Going to explain C is high. Today we're going to talk about two array methods, find and find index. Well, find is used to find an element inside an array, and find index is used to find the index of that element inside an array. Well, because these two methods here works the same, I'm going to talk about find only, and then at the end, I'm going to do some examples with find index. So let's go and talk about find. Well, first, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Now let's see an example where you need to use find. So I have here an array called users and it has three users. Each user here is an object. Well, now I want to find one of these elements here, a user, and then I'm going to store that user inside a variable called result. Now what I need to do is I want to go through my array one element by one starting from the from the beginning and then I'm going to do a test each time. So for example I'm going to do the test on the user name and because I need to find the user with the name James I'm going to check whether the user.name equals to James each time. So on the first iteration for the first element the name is Robert so I'm going to check Robert equals James and this will evaluate to false. So I'm going to go to the next one. Now James equals James, that's true. So I'm going to save this into my result and then break. I don't even need to go and check this one here. So I will always with this logic, I will always get the first occurrence or the first element that satisfies my condition here. Now let's go and see how to achieve this using a for loop. So I'm going to create my user and then create a variable called result. This is where I want to store the user. And then I'm going to use a full loop. I'm going to start from zero and then stop at the last element here. And now I'm going to increment i by one each time. So because I'm going to go from the first in the second in the third. And now I'm going to call the users with i a user. Now this user here represents the whole object here. When i is zero, user will be this object here. When it's one, it's going to be this object here. When it's two, it's going to be this object here. And then I'm going to use my condition. So I'm going to use an if statement. And then I'm going to check if the user.name, this property here, is equal to James. If that's true, what I want to do is I'm going to set my result equal to that user. The user that satisfies this condition here. And now that I found the user, I don't want to go to the next one. So I'm going to use the break statement here. So now if I go and console log my result, I'm going to find it equal to this object here, the second object. Now this is exactly how the find method works. And let's say, for example, if I'm looking for a username that equals to John, and this doesn't exist in my user, as you can see here. So in this case, when I created result, result now is undefined. And now because if I go through my array, I will never change result. So if I console result at the end, result will be undefined. And that's the same with find. The find method, when it doesn't find your element, it's going to return undefined. Now let's go and see how find works. For the syntax, you want to call find on your array and you want to pass in a function. And this function will be called by find on each element one by one. And my function here will check if these elements here, each element is satisfying the condition or not. When my function returns false, find will go to the next one. If my function returns true for a condition, then that element is going to be the find element. Now, because I'm passing a function to another function, we call this a callback function. Now, let's talk about that function. The function, you can call it any name you want, as long as it's not reserved. And then the first element is going to be the value. And the value here, it represents the element in your array. So value will be the first element, then the next one, and then the third one, etc. Now the second parameter is going to be the index. And the index is going to be 0, then 1, then 2. 
The last one here is going to be the array itself. So the array you call find upon. So sometimes you don't have access from within your function to the array, the array you call upon find. So if you need to use the array here and you don't have access to it, so you just need to use the third parameter. Now inside your function here, you can do any logic you want. And then at the end, you must return a condition. When this condition here is satisfies, means that when this condition here returns true, that means you found your element. And find here will then return the element if it's found. If the condition is never satisfied, then the element is not found in your array and find will return undefined. Now let's go and achieve the same thing we achieved here using find. So I'm going to create my users array first, and then I want to create a function called James. So I called this James because I want to find the user that its name is James. Now, again, I'm going to call this first parameter user because this one here is representing the elements in my array and each element in my array is a user. So I prefer to call this user. And then the second one is the index. I can actually call this i or i the x. Now I'm going to call the last one array. But because I don't need array and index, I'm just going to go and remove these and just keep the user, the first parameter that represents the element in my array. Now I'm going to the return a condition. And that condition is going to be the same one here. So I'm going to return user to a name equals James. Now, if I call find on my users array, users of, and then pass my James callback function to find. Now, what will happen is that find will go and call the James function on this element here. So the user of that name here is Robert. Robert equals James. That's false. So it's going to go to the next one. Then it's going to call the James again, the function, the callback function on this one here. This time user that name is James and it equals to James and this will return true. So now, so now find will break. It's not going to go to the next one and returns the element, this element here. So if I take a look on the result element, it's going to be equal to the same result we got here. The object with the name James and age 30 the second element here. Also, you can see here that this code here is more readable than this one here. So you can see that users that find James. So we know exactly what this code is doing. Now, also, if you don't want to use a callback function, you can still use an inline function. Again, the first parameter is the element. You can call it whatever you want. For example, the user, because each element here is user. Then the second one is index. The third is array. Now let's do the same example with an inline function. So I'm going to call find and I'm going to pass in my anonymous function. The first parameter is going to be user or element. And then I'm going to return the same condition user.name equals James. Again, if I console log the result, I will get the same result. Now you can also use an arrow function as an inline function. So we can go and call find and then I'm going to pass an array function. Again, the first element is going to be called user and then I'm going to return the same condition and this will get me the same result again. Now, if you are familiar with uh, an array function, when your arrow function just uh, returns a value, so you can just go and remove the color braces and the return statement. So now my code will look like this. So I'm going to call users.find, then my uh, parameter user, and then the arrow, and then my condition. So because here I'm using just one parameter, you can actually get rid of the parentheses. Again here, because my arrow function, all it does is returning a value, we have got rid of the curly braces and the return keyword. So now if I run this code here, I'm going to get the same result again. And now you can see that we have used here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines of code. And here with just one, two, two lines of code, we achieved the same result. And still my code here is more readable than this one here.
Now, let's do a recap. So we have seen that find can take in a callback function. The callback function can be an align function where the first parameter is the element, the second is the index, and the last one is the array. Now, the last parameter I want to talk about is the second parameter you can pass in beside your callback function which is the this argument. Now, let's see an example here about the this argument and why do you need that uh, argument. So I have here an array uh, of numbers and I have here one, two, three, four, five, six elements. Now, I'm going to call find on my numbers array and then I'm going to pass in an inline function and I'm going to search for the element that its value equals five, which is this element here. So I'm going to go from one, two, three, four. It's the fourth element here. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to console log the this. So we don't care this time about the result. We care about the this keyword here. So if I console log this, what I'm going to get in my in my console, so it's going to run this function, find is going to run this function on the first uh, element, so nine. Then it's going to console log this. And now because this is called from within a function, this will refer to the global object, which is the window in this case, because I'm running this in a web browser. Now it's going to return false because nine doesn't equal to five. Then it's going to move to the next one. It's going to again console log the window object, and then it's going to go to the next one because one doesn't equal to five. Now, again with 8, we're going to return window, and because 8 doesn't equal to 5, it's going to go to 5, the next element here, or the next number. Now, it's going to console log again the window object, and now because 5 is equal to 5, it's going to return true, and we're going to get 5 as the result, and find will not go to the next element here. So, we're just going to go and see window a console log four times, even if I have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. And now sometimes you need to change the object that this refers to. So in that case, what you want to do, you want to pass that object or that value as the second parameter for your find method. So here, if I pass object and then run this code, instead of getting the window object four times, I'm going to get this object here that I passed as the this argument or the second parameter. And now I think that's all you need to know about the find method. Now let's move on and talk about find index. I'm not going to go through everything again because find index and find works the same way. So, find index also takes in a callback function. That callback function could be an inline function where the first parameter is the element in your array, the index, and the last parameter is the array. Also, the find index can take in a second parameter that's called this argument beside your callback function whenever you want to change the object that this refers to. Now I'm going to use the same user array we used before with find as an example. So I'm going to use the same function. Again, the first parameter is going to be user, index, and then array. And because I don't need these two here, I'm just going to remove them and keep user. I'm going to return user.name equals James. And now I'm going to create a const called index because find index returns an index. And then I'm going to call find index. And then I'm going to pass in my callback function James. Now James will be again called by find index on each element and when the condition here is satisfied, uh, find index will return the index of that element and break. So now if I run this, I will get as the index one because when find index run the function on the user name Robert, it's going to return false. It's going to go to the next one. Then uh, this time it's going to return true. And the index of this element is zero, one. So it's going to be one. And now let's talk about the only difference that there is between find and find index. So let's say I want to go and find an index or the index of an element that doesn't exist in my array here. So I'm going to create a function called user, and then I'm going to look for a user that his name is John. 
So if I go now and call find index with the callback John, in this case, what I'm going to get is minus one. So this is the difference. Find index when the, when it doesn't find the element inside your array, it's going to turn minus one. But for the find method, it's going to return and defined. And I think that's all you need to know about find and find index. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the video. Take care.